Hello, everyone. My name is Gustavo Dori, and I'll be your host today. So today I'm going to talk about how to prepare yourself for finding a job in Japan. Um, this content was, um, was prepared in January 2021, but it's actually a copy of some of my speeches I gave during 2019 and 2020 as well. So if you saw one of my presentations, you might be seeing the same thing again. But there's uh, there's always something new in the midst of it. Okay, so let me start. Uh, my name is Gustavo Dori, and I'll be introducing myself a little bit. Then I'm gonna talk about um, my experience with job hunting in Japan. And in the end, some of the hints and some of the things I learned during my time here. So please, uh, Hold on a little bit. Well, I'm from this small town in Brazil called Juiz de Fora. It's about a 26, 25 hour flight, plus uh, the exchange of planes. There's no direct flight. Brazil is very far from here. And it's a very average Latin American town. You have the open uh, markets. You have a little bit of carnival this year with Corona, no carnival, but still it's a nice town and it's very close to Rio de Janeiro. It's about a two hour, three hour drive from Rio de Janeiro, if you've ever been to Brazil. Then I got a scholarship to study in Keio, the Mombu Kagakusho scholarship. That's probably why you're hearing uh, me now. And I had a great time. I studied design, Keio Media Design, and after, uh, studying at Keio. I got super lucky and I got invited to a job interview at Sony. So what happened was people uh, asked me, how did I got the job at Sony? So basically during my time at Keio, I did a project with Sony. And after about six months, they were doing their uh, process to select people. And they actually, somebody reminded of me and called my teacher and said, oh, remember that guy, Doris? He's still around. Did he find a job yet? At that time, I was planning to go to the doctorate because, you know, if you get the Mondokaga Kshuri scholarship, the, you can just, not, you can just go, but it's easier to pass from the master to the doctorate. And I was going that path. But then Sonny said, why don't you interview with us? Maybe you might like us. And I did like, and I joined the Vio Fit. Uh, product planning, and I joined the product planning from Vio general, uh, in general, but Viofit was my product. I had a great time there. I did a lot of user research around the world with Sony. I was around 26, 27, traveling around, had a great time, but I also got kind of frustrated with the uh, promotion process at Sony. So in Sony Japan, they changed it now, but at that time, 10 years ago, um, the process was by seniority. And I wanted to do more. I wanted to become a manager faster. And I asked my some of my friends and they say, recruit is a great place. So I moved it to this company called Recruto, right? Recruit. And I worked in a lot of projects there as a UX designer. Then, I gained a little bit of confidence to actually open my own business. And I started this company called Motify about five years ago. And we were doing leadership support. We were doing engagement surveys. Uh, happiness at work was the, the motto of the company. And I was very happy that I could sell part of this. And we created a new product called Welcome HR about employee onboarding, core database for shops and franchises. So, you know, when you just join a new job, they're gonna ask you to like, oh, can you sign the contract? Can you give you my pass, uh, your passport? Can I give you, uh, can you give us more information, right? The company needs to send that information to the government somehow. So now you can do it all online with our platform. Actually, you can do it even from the smartphone and We've been growing quite well this past year because of the corona. Well, a little bit about myself in terms of age and stuff. So you, you might get curious. I got married at 28. Uh, I got the first kid, uh, Lara, at 31. Then the second kid, Lisa, at 33. 
I'm 35 now, I live in Kamakura. This is not Kamakura behind me, this is a Zoom background, it's at night. But I wish, I wish my house was like this. It might be in the near future. But anyway, uh, Kamakura, if you don't know, is about an hour from Tokyo. We are very close to the beach and there's a lot of temples here. There is even a period in Japan called Kamakura period that here was the center of the political power discussion uh, in the 1200 or something. Anyway, my agenda for today, I have a key message then how to choose your company about job posting websites about agents, about senpais writing your resume, about tips on the interview and what can you do to be prepared. Well, my key message, how to do job hunting in Japan. So the point is, it's very common. And now because of Corona, those kinds of scenarios don't happen as much, right? But it's still happening online and it's kind of a similar vibe where you get everybody dressed the same and uh, you have a company presenting to you and say our company is, might be the best and you have to choose our company. But what happened, what I felt, I felt like a ant, you know, like kind of similar. <laughs> and I didn't felt special and being a foreigner in Japan and that's very related to me, Dory. I like to feel special. I like to feel uh, that I'm a little different or I can, uh, how can I say? People can see myself as a person, not as just a foreigner or just a group of people. So do you want to be an ant? <laughs> that's my question. And if you want to be an ant, please. Uh, and, and it's fine, you know, I don't want to be. So. Uh, this do you want to be an ant come from this move called uh, Waking Life. I recommend it's a very good book. But anyway, the point is, I want people to see me and I want to see people in the companies as people, you know, like look in the eye. And I felt the Japanese kind of job hunting was kind of an, a number kind of thing and it didn't felt uh, so nice. So it's like, be the purple cow. The purple cow is not my theory either. Having said that, I use a lot. The point is, imagine you're driving and a, your kids or, or some of your friends say, a cow, and then you're like, yeah, whatever. And then they say, oh, a purple cow, and you have to take a look. Even though it's not that important, you have to take a look. So how can you promote yourself or be in a position that people will at least take a look at you as a person or, or something, instead of just looking you in the midst of the group? So why is that important? I'll bring a, uh, another message here, but the point is you cannot speak as good of Japanese as the Japanese people. You don't have the same networking as they have because they've been here forever, right? So they have their high school friends, they have uh, young university friends, they have their uh, elementary school friends, so they have more network, they have parents, cousins, all that. You can't compete on networking, you can't compete on the language. So you have to find your way to compete. And if you put yourself just as a, a Japanese, you're gonna lose that because they are better at being Japanese than you are. <laughs> so you, you should be the foreigner, you should be the special, you should be the person who brings something different to be valued in that marketplace. And let me talk about the job market now. So there's a lot of jobs for IT and a lot of jobs for sales and market. That's are, are the most. This is a job uh, posting website for foreigners as well. Japan is uh, the country with more jobs in the world. So it, it's the one with less unemployment. Even with the corona, still you get very little uh, unemployed compared in comparison with countries like Brazil, US or whatever. But the unemployment rate here, uh, it's very low, which is great. So choosing a job company, well, too many to choose. <laughs> so the point is, there's a lot of jobs in the market today. So there's a lot of companies hiring and the population in Japan is decreasing. So the working population, so for example, I'm 35, I have, thousands of options around here to choose. So what I mean about do the work and you'll find one is 
what you should do. You should not do, a lot of the Japanese, they apply for like 50 companies and it's kind of making a number game. But I prefer a method of quality where like you apply for five companies at max at one time. If you got rejected, if you don't want a company, stop one and put another one. You research more about those companies. So before you go to even apply to the job, what does that company does? What can I help in that company? That's the point. How can I be a different person in that company? How can they use my talents in a sense? And then one thing that I recommend is looking how the people from that company work. So go on Facebook, LinkedIn, online stalk them a little bit. Because the point was when I was looking for a job, uh, eventually I chose recruit, but I asked other companies as well. I won't say the names here, but I would meet somebody from the company and the, company, the guy was like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm, uh, I work so much. Then I would try to meet and that other company was like, oh, we are so busy, I can't meet you, never. Or they would cancel last minute. And what happened was I had a great experience with the people working at Recruit. Like they made time for me in the middle of the day. They were very friendly. They paid for lunch for sometimes for the coffee and stuff. And the point was, I felt their environment, people could control their own time. And that was important for me. It might not be important for you, but still, that was the my my choice. It was like, I want a company that I can grow a lot. Uh, I don't mind working a lot, but as long as I have control of my time and Recruit offered me that. What I want to say is, I just learned about it because I went on Facebook, LinkedIn and stuff and saw other people that work in the company, what their lifestyle was. Uh, then once you decide more or less the company, you try to find a senpai and some mutual connection to introduce you to somebody in the company so you learn more about their lifestyle. And meet them for a lunch or coffee. Invite them, how can I say? Uh, if you say, oh, I just want to talk, it's it's very hard, but normally like, can you give me 15 minutes and a call or can I, now the Zoom thing helps a little bit because you can just ask them for 15 minutes, doesn't hurt that much. During lunch is even better because it's normally a time where they won't be as busy. So uh, that's the work, like you have to do the work and know more about the company so you can show yourself, present yourself with better uh, things to say when you get the job interview and things. So there's two big differences in terms of uh, company size. So you can choose between a small company or a big company. In the big company, uh, I always mention this, your mother is gonna be so proud. Imagine I was working for Sony and my mom was like, wow, amazing. My son working for Sony and she was telling her friends and stuff. Because in Brazil, you know, like I'm from the countryside and I was uh, one of the top companies in the world. But you also have very little freedom in the first five, 10 years. Uh, you get to be good at one task and go deeper and that's fine too. Salary and benefits might be better. Then there's a lot of chances to go abroad. Uh, in smaller companies, you have a lot of freedom, time, freedom of ideas, create new projects. It's closer to thinking about money and how the business really works. Salary might be smaller, but if you're planning to open your own business and do those things, you learn more by being a small company because you see all the pieces together. And if you want to do something global, it's a little harder because normally they won't have as much money to invest outside the main market. Having said that, you can propose and you can uh, do your own thing if they trust you. The other difference that I see is the super business-like, suit-like, or more casual style. Japan is changing a lot more to this casual style, but still there's a lot of this stiff business. And both are fine, to be honest. When I joined Sony, I wanted that stiff business, like super salary month, how they say in Japan. But eventually I got older, I started having kids and I started to think, you know, maybe the casual style suits me better. I'll be honest now, as, as you can see, this is normally how I work my work attire. I'm kind of the middle of this. I'm not full suit and I'm not full relaxed. And that was the place I found for myself. Uh, what's the best job searching site in Japan? 
And I was working Recruit Korea at a job site. I even worked for Eriko Navi next door and stuff. And all I can say is they are all the same. Hey. <laughs> so what I want to mean is uh, in Japan, there's I think 160, 170 job searching websites. They are separated by area, by whatever, anything you, you can imagine. So they eventually they start looking very much the same. Um, me, myself, I like IT. So I use Wantedly a lot to hire people for my company. And when I was looking for a job, I look at it a lot too. But it was just my IT preference. Uh, you, any uh, job website might help you. Agents. So about the agents, there's a lot too. There's like Thai Job, uh, Robert Ward, there's, there's no Connect Job, there's uh, RGF and stuff. Anyway, it doesn't make that much difference either. Having said that, they might look and feel like your friend, but remember, they are salesmen and might indicate you to the highest bidder. They have their client's interest at heart and you are not the client, you are the product. So you meet the, the, those uh, agents. I love agents, to be honest, because it saves you all the time to be going through the, all these job websites. The agents look, they talk to you, then they look the job positions for you, and they even arrange the interviews. And they do try to get you a better salary because it reflects uh, the percentage they will make over you. Having said that, uh, if you don't trust them enough, it's don't don't go with them so uh my recommendation is to meet maybe three or four and choose one you trust better before going with them to the interviews and stuff about senpais very important keep in touch with them make friends with senpais so if i go back in my career my job at sony uh, my job at recruit then i opened my own company and i a lot of this was related to my friends at the university. And I call senpai, but it can be your kohai, like it can be the people you work at, uh, you study together. The point about senpai, normally they are a, a few years older than you. So they are ahead in the career. So they might recommend you and uh, help you get uh, something better as well. So when I, got at, when I got the offer from Sony, I had a senpai there that I called and he explained, he put me at peace to join Sony was a good place. Then at Recruit, uh, I also got another friend there who recommended me to the HR. And so it was easier to get in, that kind of thing. Writing, so uh, how do you get close to Senpai? I'll tell a little bit later, but remember this Zemi, like there is this seminars for a small group of people that the teachers normally run. Join those seminars, please, uh, as soon as possible. So you make friends with a smaller uh, amount of a group of people and they normally treat the people from the ZME, from those special seminars, uh, close together. If you don't know what that means, ask somebody at your university, they're gonna direct you to some of those uh, seminars. Writing your resume. So what they told me a lot in Japan was to write this resume here on the right. And I said, no, I'm doing the one on the left the guy from the agents and everybody was like, no, don't do it. You can't do it. And then when I went for the job interviews, everybody was like, oh, you are the guy with the nice resume. The point was they were super bored to see the boring Japanese resume all the time. So then when they saw my resume, they wanted to read it a little bit more. I don't want to be an ant, right? So it makes a, it's a small detail makes a lot of difference. I wanted to show myself because kind of designer and stuff. So I made a little bit nicer design, but uh, whatever I want to do, try to be a little bit more authentic. It's fine. Even though they tell you not the HR, it's fine. So the, about the interview, I, run, I tell people run away from a place like this because normally the salary is going to be low. You're not going to be treated as a career. It's just a job kind of thing. This is better if they're interviewing you people to person. I even prefer this kind of casual interview first uh, as a way to put you at a relaxed pace and be able to ask more difficult questions. We're here still a little bit stiff. 
uh, be tight and clean. As you can see, those both guys are the same person, uh, just one is tight and clean and the other one's not, like with the whole suit and stuff. And even if you're not using the suit, doesn't matter. Uh, whatever clothes you are, just make sure you don't feel like, ah, like you feel clean and like uptight a little bit during the interview. What to do to be prepared for the interview. So work hard on side projects. I'm telling you it again, if you don't follow as a me, follow on right now, because that's where you're going to meet trusted senpais. Japanese language is a must. Don't think otherwise. Take time to learn, seriously. At least they spoke in Japanese. I had uh, about three days ago, I had lunch with the previous head of HR for Unicro. The guy was a foreigner from the US and he got to be head of HR globally for Unicro, one of the biggest brands in the world of fashion, right? A foreigner making it happen in Japan. Great, most important skill, Japanese. Because he couldn't get there without the Japanese, you know? So if you are aiming higher in Japan, the, there's no other route. So some people say, oh, my friend doesn't speak much, but he's still got a job. Those are exceptions. Those are really exceptions. Learn the Japanese. Oh, but still, can I, uh, people ask me all the time, oh, but how, how strong you need to be in the Japanese? Just keep learning it. When I joined Sony, it was okay. I didn't pass their Japanese test, it was okay. But I just kept, kept learning, kept learning. Because you're not gonna learn a language in a moment. It's, a, it's two, three years of constant work until you remind, uh, uh, you get into that uh, natural pace. So unless you take 30 minutes, an hour every day on putting yourself to learn the Japanese, you're gonna have a hard time eventually. Like you're not gonna get that promotion. You're not gonna get that job because your Japanese is mama and you think it was okay during university, but no, it's not. And do internship with companies, but try to do longer internships, like six months or a year. Sometimes they have in Japan some like a week internship and it's just a week internship in Japan. It's just a company trying to advertise, oh, you should join this company <laughs> when you graduate. So try things longer and instead of, because you are Momo Kagakushuri, a max, you have a probably you're doing a master, you are kind of a smart person. And instead of doing the Kombini Arubaito, go for an internship. I like Wantedly, they have a lot of internships there, but there's other ways where you can find internship in your area. And Japanese learning hints, because Japanese is a must. I love Japanese pod 101. I don't get any money by promoting them. I just, it just really, really helped me when I was uh, learning it in more detail. And Japanese music in general. Now I get the Spotify. Before I used to like a lot to go in karaoke. With this Corona, karaoke is not so strong. But find a genre, a genre that you like and listen to the songs while reading the lyrics. So uh, Spotify has a lot of Japanese lyrics, even in Romaji sometimes. I like anime songs too. So sometimes I put like Naruto songs or, or uh, whatever. And they, I have the lyrics there and I read together. So it trains a lot, my listening and speaking. So that was the way I found. So I, was, I would get in a train to go to, to the university and I would put my cell phone there and keep like listen to the music and learning the lyrics. If I would go home, I would try to sing a little bit together just to practice talking it out loud. Because if you try to learn from anime, it doesn't work because anime, uh, it's terrible Japanese. <laughs> it's very rude a lot of times because it's fighting anime and stuff or joking anime, you know, it, it doesn't work that uh, well, but music normally works better. And I think that's all. Thank you very much. I'm Gustavo Dori. I, I'm reachable in this email. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, you, uh, whatever you can find me. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for listening. And I wish all the best for your career in Japan. And I hope 
we can grow together. You find a career here and maybe I can help you somewhere uh, along the way. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.